What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be giving you the step-by-step -step process as to how I grow so many stores to 15k a month. Alright, so we after the intro now, I'm going to hop in my computer. I made a little PowerPoint presentation, you know how we do. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into that now. Okay, so we're on, we're on my computer now. Um, so yeah, this is a video how to go from zero to fifteen thousand dollars with Facebook ads. Um, I'm basically gonna lay it all out. Um, well, Noah, what makes you what makes you so qualified to to teach how to do this? Well, I've I've taken seven to eight stores from zero to fifteen thousand dollars with Facebook ads. Um, you know, multi five figure a month stores. Obviously, we went beyond fifteen thousand, but I've done it quite a few times, and I have a pretty damn good idea of how to exactly do it. So obviously the first step is you gotta get your store set up properly. Um, and again, there's no real right or wrong way to do it. You just want it to be professional and uh, sell. So like this, this store needs to make people wanna buy. So my first recommendation is find YouTube videos to build a basic structure. Um, this is more technical stuff like building a theme um, you know, putting in all the photos, getting a logo, all on YouTube, very simple stuff. Um, the next thing, install Sales Pop and Checkout Boost by Beaconing. Um, these are really like the only two apps that all of my stores have in common, um, is they have Sales Pop and Checkout Boost. Sales Pop is like a little thing that pops up in the bottom left, bottom right, wherever you want. And it basically shows the people that have ordered in your store, so it's like a little bit of social proof. Um, and then Checkout Boost is a bunch of different things that, um, you know, you can add scarcity to your Add to Cart button um, in your Checkout page, like timers and stocks and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay, so take some, take some time to show some love in your Terms of Service return policy and About Us page. A lot of people don't really do this. Um, I do agree. It's not that important. Like you can get sales without an about us page and you could just have a generic TOS and return policy. But um, of course, I would recommend because if you are going to be going to $15,000, having a good return policy in TOS, it'll help you down the line. Um, as long as you know, you, you agree with everything, it's better if you put your own terms in there and everything. Um, and then we'll go to the next step. Finding products. You, uh, you got to find 10 high quality six figure products. Um, I said click here to learn how, but I don't think, you know, YouTube doesn't allow annotations anymore for me. So um, I'll just put the link to the video in the description or I'll have it linked in, at the end of the video. Um, but it was basically a video talking about how to find six figure products. I uploaded it like a few days ago. Um, once you have those 10 products, then you want to create like actual descriptions for these products that sell. Um, plenty of YouTube videos on this. You don't want to just import the AliExpress like checklist. Um, you know, I've seen stores be successful with it, but a good majority of my stores, we have like a, a really descriptive uh, description, you know, size and charts, um, you know, paragraphs that are just strictly made for selling. Like, why would you get, get it from us? Our guarantee, like mention your return policy, like all the, all the scarcity that you need to, um, and yeah, I have more info on finding products in other videos. Um, so next one, next thing that you want to do to, to, to prepare to running ads is you want to create ad copy for three of the products. Um, try to do this like within an hour span. Like it really doesn't take that much time. Um, so yeah, you just want to make three of them. And that's because for the first test run, you're going to test three different products. Um, but remember, you have 10 products to test, so you want to keep on making ad copies for all of those products as well. Um, so in terms of the ad copy, you want to use what's already, um, you know, what's already working. Like if you stole the product from another store, see if you can find their ad copy and use that. Um, if you can't, then follow the process for creating solid ad copy. I'll be uploading that video in a couple of days. So yeah, once you have those those three three ad copies made, now you're ready to start testing them. So what I would do is I would create three ad sets at five dollars a day and let them run for three days. Um, you know, fifteen dollars per ad set, which is like per audience, is enough money to see a sale. 
um, even with higher ticket products. A lot of people think that like it's you know you'll get a lot of sales quicker on a fifteen dollar product than a fifty dollar. It's not necessarily true. So um, yeah, just just give it three days. That means in total you'll spend you'll spend like fifty dollars, and if you get a few checkouts, you might want to let it run for four days. Um, you know, just those basic rules. Just use common sense. Um, you know, if you're selling a watch, target, target, just target watch and then maybe narrow it down. Um, may narrow it down a little bit, but you want to keep it simple. Um, you just want to get the right product in front of the right person. Facebook has a pretty good idea of who the right person is. <clears throat> Another thing is you want to use different targeting for each ad set. Um, I mean, you don't have to do this. You could just do like different variations. But I definitely recommend using a different audience for each ad set. So maybe one of them you'll target watch. Maybe the other one you'll target horology, um, which is like the, the study of, you know, just, just get with the program and, and do some do some research on this in the suggestions tab. Um, so yeah, if there's no sales after three days, I usually just turn it off. I mean, if there's like a couple checkouts or if there's a lot of checkouts, I run for a couple more days. But yeah, usually if there's no sales for three days, I'll just move on. Um, you know, something that's optional when it when it comes to testing countries, um, I would test the United States, Australia, United Kingdom, and Canada. Those are like the, the countries that I see the most success in. But one option that you can do is you can just type in worldwide and then exclude third tier countries. So, I mean, the problem with worldwide is you don't want to target countries that are just like tire kickers, essentially. Um, you know, you want you want the good quality tier one, maybe a few tier two countries, especially when it comes to collecting data at the end of the day. So I would definitely exclude third tier countries if you're going to do worldwide ads. So plan to do this for every single one of the products that you test. You have 10. Um, so you just have to do this 10 times. So we'll go to the next thing. So after you tested a bunch of products, you finally get your first sale. Um, what do you do? So what I would do is if you're doing if you're doing like worldwide ads or if you're testing United States, Canada, Australia, you want to make more ads in the same country, um, or if you were just testing interests in the same country or interests that the the one ad set that made a sale. So you need to like let's say you your first sale was in Canada, you need to use the breakdown tab to see what country the sale was in. If it was in Canada, just make another ad that's only in Canada and see how that works. Um, the idea here is just to do more of what works and to do that, you need to know what works. Um, so yeah, so like this, this might sound intimidating, but it's really not that difficult if you have a winning product. Try to create one new ad set a day up until you have like 25 to 30 sales. Um, you know, if, if you have a real winner product, this shouldn't take more than two, maybe two weeks, two to three weeks, um, because, you know, your ads will start kicking off and they should be staying consistent. And another rule that I always follow, if it spends more than $15 with no sales, I would just cut it. Because um, like I said, like in my experiences, at least most ads will get a sale like within their first couple of days, at least if they're going to do good in the like medium term and they're going to stay consistent. Okay. So this is a situation that you're probably, you're probably going to run into. Like we, we run into it all the time. Um, you know, it makes a sale, you get all excited, you know, you got to win a product and then you start making more ads in the same country or the same interest. And it just doesn't make any more sales. Um, just stop doing it. <laughs> like we just move on pretty quickly. Um, like the new ads that you should create, they should be getting traction. If it's if it's a, a real winning product, they should be getting traction. So like if you test three to seven new ad sets after you get your first sale and, and none of them take off or none of them make even another sale, I would just move on, you know, spend like 60, 70 dollars testing um, after it makes its first sale, like spend like an extra 30 to 40 bucks trying to get that second sale. And um if you can't get it to make another sale, just move on. Like, don't get married to the product. Don't love it because it was your first sale because you're going to waste money. Um, you know, maybe spend $80 if you're getting a lot of, um, if you're getting a lot of like checkouts and stuff, maybe spend 80, you know, push it, push it a little bit. But 
I mean, don't don't get married to a product, guys. There's so many products out there that you can be testing that can do so much better than this. So just always have that in the back of your mind. Okay, so we're going back. Like, if that doesn't happen and you keep on creating new ones and they're taking off. So once you have, like, 25 to 30 sales, um, I would start testing lookalikes based off of page views. Um, and, then, and then start creating... Start creating all of your lookalike audiences and testing them out. Um, the same thing, there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to do this. I'm sure I'll release one in the future. Right now, we're just going over strategy. So you're just going to have to take notes and then come back and, and go find the tutorials later on. But yeah, start creating custom audiences on page views. This way, you can set up retargeting and you can also make lookalikes off of it. Um, so you want to start creating your lookalikes just 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, and then test those out one day at a time. Um, you know, take it slow, let them, let them do their thing. And, and yeah, you should be doing this when you have 25 to 30 products. So, I mean, 25 to 30 sales. So this is exactly what I do. And almost every single um, multi-five figure store, when we start testing lookalikes, like at this point, maybe we wait until there's a little bit more sales, but Usually they will take off and that's what will bring us to multi five figures is just scaling with lookalikes. And I don't mean scaling upwards, just increasing budgets. I mean, scaling outwards by creating a ton of ad sets. And, and then you have like, instead of having one ad set spending 500 bucks a day, you have a hundred ad sets spending five bucks a day. Um, that way it'll last longer because you have a ton more audiences. Um, and then, you know, you're, you're, you're making a thousand bucks a day and you haven't even scaled upwards yet. You haven't even messed with the budget. So imagine like what would happen when you start messing with the budget. Um, you know, I, I know what would happen and, and it brings you to like two to three K a day once you get there. So, you know, there, there is a very specific process that I use. Um, but like, once you get to this point, I don't really... Um, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna ever going to make a video on how to scale with lookalikes just because it's so intricate, intricate. Like a lot of people who I've helped, they just come to me directly and I do it for them. Um, but I mean, I might cover the basics of it just so that you can have an understanding. But again, like this is just an outline of what needs to be done. There's going to be like more specific videos later on. Um, but yeah, usually we just keep on scaling with lookalikes at this point and it'll bring us to that $15,000 point really not that hard you just got to go through the numbers with product testing and then follow the process try to get it up to like 30 40 sales and then start doing lookalikes so once you know like i just said once you start scaling with lookalikes you should start becoming profitable um you know get your retargeting set up properly that's a big deal um, that'll increase your profits a lot if it is a winner product your retargeting should do really well um, and you want to hit them from all angles, test all different audiences, page view, add to cart, initiate checkout, video views if you have them, post engagements, everything that you possibly can. Again, all this is going to be breaking down in future videos. And all while that's cranking, like as you're scaling it up to 500 bucks a day, you know, you're getting it, you're getting it to that 15k a month point. Work on like abandoned checkout sequences, down sells, up, up sells, cross selling. All that stuff, you have to get all that set up correctly. And now's the time to do it because once you start, I mean, once you start cranking 500 to a thousand bucks a day, um, every little thing that you do on the back end is going to cost you money. Like if you testing things work out, some things don't work out. And when you, when you want to test email sequences, test upsells, you want to nail it down in the beginning because you don't want to do it later on and then lose a bunch of sales. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, if you set all this up and you just stick with it, you'll be at 500 bucks a day before before you know it. It's really not that hard. Um, this is the step-by-step -step process as to how I build $15,000 per month stores. And that's just the beginning stages. Now to turn it into a six-figure store. I think that's going to be the next video, how to take it from five figures to six figures. Um, again, it's very simple. I follow just like a, a pretty basic strategy. Um, but yeah, if, if you follow this process, I mean, I didn't really give enough data for you to um, know exactly what I do, but I gave you a pretty damn good idea and you can reach out if you're if you're really that interested in doing this. Um, you can just reach out and I can answer answer your questions that way. But it's really not that hard. Like I, I've done this many times before. It's easily duplicatable.
Okay, so that was the video. I hope you guys liked it. Again, how to build, uh, how to go from five figures to six figures video coming soon, probably in the next week. Um, so keep your eye out for that. But I hope that gave you a lot of value and a better understanding of how exactly we, I do what I do. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram, whatever you need to do. As for this video, this is Noah and I'm out. Peace.